it's Professor T. I'm here on Friday to read you another book, a book I really love. But first of all, I wanted to find out how are you doing? I couldn't remember if it was three weeks of homeschool today or two. My sense of time is all confused. How about yours? So how many weeks is it that we've been home? Put your thinking cap on. Three, three weeks. I wonder what has changed near you. It's quieter here, very much quieter. Brooklyn is not a quiet place, but it's quiet now. And yesterday, our mayor asked that everybody wear a mask outdoors because New York City has a lot of COVID-19 cases. Very sad. So today I looked outside on my sidewalk and I said, I wonder how many people are wearing masks. Guess what? A lot of people are not wearing masks. So I was thinking about that and thinking about maybe they don't understand something about this virus. You might not feel sick, but you could infect somebody else. So some of the rules we have now and some of the regulations are very hard to follow, like staying indoors. That's hard, right? But we are the lucky ones because we feel well and staying indoors not only keeps us safe, but keeps other people safe. So think about that when you want to go outside and run around on the street or when you want to go somewhere and your mom or your dad or your grandparents, or your caregiver says, you must wear a mask. Think about why they might be telling you that. Maybe you are helping someone else. So it's Friday, and this is one of my favorite early childhood books for young children, Harold and the Purple Crayon. If you have a purple crayon or a purple marker after this book, you will probably want to draw, and you can draw whatever you like. Harold is something you might have heard in kindergarten or in preschool, but I like the Harold book, even though I'm a lot older than preschool. The author is Crockett Johnson. Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson, and this is Harold. And you will always see he has a purple crayon. Let's see what happens to Harold. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight. And he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a shortcut across the field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He looked away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Oh, 
suddenly he realized what was happening, but by then he was over his head in the ocean. He came up thinking fast and in no time, he was climbing aboard a tiny little boat. He quickly set sail and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. A sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics and the thought of picnics made him hungry, so he laid out a simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked most. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went looking for a hill to climb so he could see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see, so he decided to make a hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window out of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But he looked down over the other side and he slipped and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling into thin air. But luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows were his window. He used to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. Mm. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him anyway. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in his bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. where his 
bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he <laughs> drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. So you see why I love this book. There's Harold sleeping. I love when he remembered that the rectangle of the window went around the moon. What's this line right here? Why do you put that? That's because when you have windows, usually one can open up, right? And this is where you lift it from here. I also like that the whole book has just purple lines. Look at how many things you can talk about with just purple lines. Windows of a big city like New York, a balloon with a house like in a suburb. A very young child drawing the balloon. Oh, the pies. Don't you love the page with all the pies? So I was thinking, since you are home, I don't want to say stuck at home, but you are a little bit stuck at home. I wonder if you could take a purple crayon or a purple pencil or purple marker or just a plain pencil and use your imagination like Harold did to draw your way out of the house. In other words, draw something, take yourself on a trip where you don't have to leave home, but your drawing takes you there in your mind, in your imagination. Where would you go if you had that magic purple crayon Harold has? Would you go to the beach, to Great Adventure? I would go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but I'm an artist and I always go to museums when I'm on vacation. That's what I like to do. But what do you like to do? And if you draw a drawing, you already know what to do. You take a picture of it with your phone and send it to me. I am waiting for your work or pictures of you working so that I can put them on the blog and you can see them too. Okay, I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe and stay well. Bye-bye.